Lately, I've been doing a series called A Million Little Things in No Particular Order, number 604,660, read or reread viewpoints of a commodity trader. And the reason I put reread in there is I'd recommend you read this at least once a year. And it's a little book. If you go to davelearner.com slash books slash dash two dash read, which I'll talk about in one second, you can get a link to it. But it's a it's a neat little book. And there it is right there. So if you go to that books dash two dash read page, this is what I, this is what I wrote. Way back in the 80s, I decided to I would I decided to get serious about my trading. My goal was to read every book from the two major bookstores. There was no Amazon back then. I think it was Traders Press and Traders Library. In fact, I know that's the two it was. This one came from Traders Press. I ended up with a lot of stinkers in my library, which I gave away. <laughs> I had a raffle, and uh, you guys got got the uh, got some of those. Some of them are okay, I guess, but some of them were not. But I also made a bunch of great discoveries, and Viewpoints was definitely one of them. And I recently read reread this while working on my Master Trading Psychology course, which I don't know if I ever finished that. I have quoted many uh, gems found within. So far, I've included. Longstreet quotes in eight of my course presentations. Here's just one random one. How many times has each of us, having set out on a course, thought it necessary to continue because we have begun? Think about that the next time you fail to honor your stock. You feel like you're in this stock, you're stuck in this stock, you can't get out of this stock, but you can't give up now because you've wasted all this time and energy on it. It is important that you don't, it's important that you do not fool yourself. Don't even try. You just might do it. It is not easy to make money, particularly a lot of money in commodity trading, but you could do it if you pay the price. The price simply stated is enlightened self-discipline. You must have a program, you must know your program, and you must follow your program. Now, I just wanted to, I wanted to quote from this, and I realized if I started quoting, I wouldn't stop. But all I did there was, I think that's like on the first or second page or a few pages in, maybe page 11, uh, after all the in, all the fluff in the front. Really good book. I would recommend you read it and reread it. All right, number 283,186 should be on the next trade. On the next trade and only the next trade, execute flawlessly. Okay. All right, let's talk about what I mean by execute flawlessly. Now, I'm not saying you won't have a loss on this potential trade, but what I am going to say is, is that you need to follow the process and execute as flawlessly as possible in following the process. And it's just one trade, okay? Just one trade. Now, after I wrote a bunch of thoughts on this, I was like, well, wait a minute. There's also a little psychology involved too, right? So you need to make sure that you're of sound body and mind and how did you sleep last night okay it could be something as simple as that as i've said before there's a lot of potential extraneous influences my wife had sprained an ankle a while back and she wasn't able to exercise like he, she used to and she was getting crotchety and i was getting crotchety so it doesn't have to necessarily be an injury or illness to you it could be to someone else so you need to identify those and, and make sure you can live with them and make sure they're not influencing you. Now, a lot of this will come out if you document your life through your morning pages. And I won't go into a lot of details. I know some of you guys' eyes are gla glazing over, but you need to do them. And you just wake up every morning. I have the little um, remarkable digital notebook that I absolutely love. And you write three handwritten pages. It could be about anything. And don't try to write War and Peace. Just keep the pen down as much as you can and write about a bunch of stuff. I write about trading. I write about hobbies. I write about how I slept. You know, I know you want a part of me. Now, once you've realized that, hey, you're okay or whatever, or you can deal with whatever you're dealing with, make sure you pick the best setup or at the last minute I added to this or wait if it's not there. My trading service, I think it's been a couple of weeks since I've found anything that I think is worth trading, okay? So before I put capital in the harm's way, I want to make darn sure I have a great chance of getting that capital back and then some, right? 
Now, it should be, when you're picking the best setup, it should be an obvious trend or trend transition. Ideally, you want to be able to draw your big blue arrow, okay? And then that trend should also be persisting and accelerating, and the stock should trade cleanly and not look like electrocardiogram. Also, there's no overhead resistance or overhead supply. That's a stickler for me. It's like when I see a trade that looks pretty good, but there's a mountain of overhead supply, it's like I don't want to trade so it could go up to that resistance and hit the resistance and I make a little money on that. I want clear air, so to speak, so this thing could possibly take off and not come back. And again, trades cleanly. Now, the setup, I was thinking about how to word this, but the setup not only fits the rules, and I see people out there that'll show setups of mine that don't even fit the rules. And on the flip side, I'll see them show I see them show setups of mine and they fit the rules, but it, it I would never take the setup in a million years for something like the aforementioned overhead supply. But in addition to fitting the rules, what I was thinking is make sure it's also like textbook in nature. Like an example you would see in one of my books, or if you were writing a book on trading, you would put this in your book as a perfect example. Not knowing the outcome, obviously, but just looks like a textbook example. And of course, plan the trade, and trade the plan, right? Where's your entry, where's your stop, where's your initial profit target, and have a plan in place, a general plan in place for your trailing stop. Now, there's not enough time to get into details of all this stuff, couple thoughts a fairly liberal entry will help keep you out of trouble should the stock just kind of bounce around a little bit on noise alone a a deep nice stop a wider stop if you're struggling with trading then a wider stop provided you picked a really good looking setup a wider stop is going to help ensure that you're going to catch a trend okay and then you want to adjust your share size down accordingly now make sure you have a little bit of forethought on minor discretion if if you're disciplined enough to use a little discretion. So you want to have a little forethought. And what I mean by that is like it's like okay, Dave, I'm getting this trade, but if it takes off really fast over a day or two and it gets fairly close at an IPT, I'm going to go ahead and just take the IPT at that point, the initial profit target. I'll go ahead and take off half a share. So things like that. Um, God forbid, should it gap against me, I'm going to implement a damage control plan. Again, these things are things that require a little bit more discipline, a little more experience, but over time, they'll make more and more sense. And of course, trade the plan, okay? Um, as I said in prior broadcasts, let a stop trigger you in. I almost always use stops to trigger me in for my position trades, especially those for the trading service. That way, if I go to lunch or the bathroom or whatever, then I get triggered into a position and I don't have to sit there and watch a screen. I can go for a walk or go to the gym or whatever. And then let a stop or the initial profit target take you out to the position. Now, I thought about this earlier. You want to document, but you don't just want to document. You also want to document your feelings and then you want to document and document and document. And I think one way to think about it would be document with so much detail as if you had to define, defend yourself at a court of law. So pretend you had to defend all your actions, okay? And make sure you have plenty of documentation to go with it. Just like the crypt, like I said earlier, it's like, I don't remember what I was thinking on that crypto trade. Well, because I didn't document it. Now, if you wanna go in and, and um, you know look at some of these other trades or whatever, or if I went, it, I, I didn't do it, but I probably should have gone back and looked at the, um, the ogre trade, I should have looked at what I've documented there, but I'm pretty sure everything I just told you was my thinking on that. What does a trader do when he nears the point of loss of self-confidence? He must resort to the most powerful force in the world, positive thinking. Okay, that'll only get you so far. <laughs> it's like, a, who's it, Zig Ziglar? Talks about a little boy flunked the bath, bath test. Dad! I think I flunked the math test. And dad's like, son, you got to be positive. He says, dad, I'm positive I flunked that math test. But anyway, he must believe he can. Remembering past successes helps. It is important that he prove that he can by selecting just one trade he can operate without error. 
This does not mean a trade without a risk. It only means he can operate it without making a mistake. So that's where, as you probably can see, if you put the two and two together, this is where I, I decided to make on the next trade one of those million little things. I know I've talked about that before, but this jogged my memory, and that's why that became one of the little million little things. Now, just another one in here real quick, number of 594,581. Now just do that on the next 10,000 trades. Where's my mic? Do I have a mic? I need to get an old mic to drop. I used to be able to... <laughs> I've, I've effed up some mics by dropping the mic, but that's a mic drop right there. Do that on the next 10,000 trades. So what I did was we're resistant to, to big change, okay? So there's a little bit more psychology other than being a little goofy on that than, than might meet the eye. If you have to deal with an, how you're going to trade the next 10,000 trades, that's overwhelming, okay? But if you only have to perform flawlessly on one, then it's it's easier from a psychological standpoint, okay? And then you do another one, and then you get those reps in, as we're often talking about.